<laughs> Drum roll, please! Dan, 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 dan. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's edition of a completely improvised and made up show based on your suggestions entitled, What is It? The Rigmarole! Tonight, we have a returning champion, the star of stage and screen, the uh, elusive yet punctual Kimberly Condit. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. We yes. also have the magnetic, some would say cultic, Mark Little. Oh, oh. Hey. Thank, you, thank you. And we also have the dangerous oh. and sharpened Kirby Joe Grubb. Yes, watch yourselves, I'll poke you. If you've never seen our show before, we play lots of different characters. We go forward and backward in time. Uh, you'll catch on, You'll if you've never seen it, you'll catch on in just a couple of minutes. If you watch, that didn't make sense, but the rest of it will. Uh, <laughs> so for our prompts, please uh, go ahead and suggest in the chat bar for us. Uh, whose is this? I don't know, did you click that? Yes, that's me. Okay. Uh, Wait, that was from last time. <laughs> yeah, here, here you go. Do here that. You are. All right. Give us, okay, what's your favorite political movement? Uh, think of a political movement. Could be made up. Uh, you could throw an ism on the end of a word you like and make it a political movement. But give us the, uh, what's your favorite political movement? And somehow we will use that to inspire us to create characters, situations, scenarios, and the like. Make up. A political movement. D Sure's coming in. Mr. Little, I didn't realize you do improv here with Trevor Lawrence. If I knew who Trevor Lawrence was, I'm sure that would be funny. Uh, if okay, we... it's me. I'm Trevor. Trev. Trev. Reindeer Trev. rights. <laughs> Reindeer rights. Thank you, Big Loud, for 2069. Nice name. Great name. <laughs> that's our that's our um, Twitch. One of our Twitch. One of our Twitchers. One of our Twitchers. Oh come on, D. <laughs> oh, uh, swimmers rights movement. Okay, okay. I like it, Julie. We got reindeer rights. Uh, we got the dance movement of 1990. Oh, okay. Groove is in the heart. <laughs> got. It. <laughs> don't don't forget this one. <laughs> Defunding Italians. <laughs> right, right. I, I've heard a lot of well, we'll leave that one from if it shows up in the show. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh yeah, it's, uh, um I like uh defunding Italians. Let's take that one. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, very bold. Very bold choice. Very right, choice. We we're going we're going big tonight. We're going hard. Um and Miss uh, Condit, this is your prompt for our lovely audience. And I'll read it aloud in case anyone enjoys that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> this is a Garth Brooks song that never got released. So, you know, famously he had Friends in Low Places, uh, The Dance, uh, Ain't Going Down Till the Sun Comes Up are some examples. So what's a song that sounds like it could be a Garth Brooks song, but it was never released? Mm -hmm. There's my free range donkey. Right. Great, love it. What else? What else? I want a bunch. I want a bunch of options. But if I only get my free range donkey, well then I'll take it. Um, let's see. My hat flew down the riverside, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and really a lot of little, uh, little family representation here. I love to see it. Mm -hmm. Little families in that. Little family likes to. They 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 love this part of the show, and then they I think they kind of turn it off after that. Yeah, and then they, yeah, then they shut it off. <laughs> Left on Third Street, acquaintances and semi high places. My truck went off the road. Um, I I like Left on Third Street. I like Left on Third Street. Left on Third Street. Oh, Left Chad on Third Little Street. sweeping here. Chad Little. Chad Little. Oh, was that his? The other one was his. Oh yeah, it was. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to make a clean sweep. I mean, look, we we don't play favorites in terms of people. We play favorites in terms of suggestions, though. That's very yeah. true. And family, and we did nepotism is is fully encouraged here. I that's told. true. And the third and final prompt: What is the last book you didn't finish? I'm sure most of you have never not finished a book because you're <laughs> you're well-read and dedicated people, but.
in the case that you might have. What was that book? What was that book? What's the title? What was it? Oh. I, I, I did not finish The Brothers Karamazov. Oh. Wow. <laughs> no. And I will never tell that story again. <laughs> fair, I, fair enough. I, I don't get it. Maybe it's a literary reference. Uh, so we've got The un, Untethered Soul, mm -hmm. uh, War and Peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big Webster's... Cloud 2069 didn't finish Harry Potter number seven. Are you insane? <laughs> what? I have a hard oh. time believing that. Is that true? Come on, uh, Big Come on, big loud. <laughs> Webster's unabridged dictionary. Uh, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street. Don't sweat the small stuff. The Bible. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> the Bible. Right. Mm. Mm. Oh, dang. I mean, the Bible is so rich. Uh, so many options there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's go with untethered soul. Let's let's Ooh. go with the, the untethered, untethered soul. One, yes, the untethered soul. Mm. So we will use these uh, suggestions and perhaps others to inspire us, as I said, to create characters, scenarios, situations, and we'll invent and weave a yarn for you. Uh, let us review, Mr. Little. First, we have defunding Italians for a political movement uh, that you love. Mm -hmm. uh, left on Third Street is the name of a Garth Brooks song that didn't quite make it. And mm -hmm. The Untethered Soul is a book that was not finished by our audience. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And now please prepare yourselves for this edition of The Rigmarole. The year 1936, location Bronx, New York. Anything was possible. The streets lined with brick and copper, ladies in the window, pizzaiolas on every corner. That's where we meet our hero, little Dominico. Hey, little Dominico! Ha <laughs> ha Yeah! Little Dominico had a big ambition in life. He was the youngest of seven Italian brothers who'd come over from Sicily just ten years before. His father worked down at the bubblegum factory, but he also rolled his own cigarettes and sold them for extra money. But Dominico had a dream. He wanted to make what he called a supreme pizza. Everybody, everybody in streets of New York, I got a dream. And that dream is a supreme pizza. You crazy. Oh. oh, what's that? Hey, 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 little Dominico, what are you yelling on the street corner about? You're crazy. You're crazy. You're a crazy person. You're going to call me not so crazy when you see a pizza pie with sausage, pepperoni, when you see it's got mushrooms and onions. Oh, come on. Come on. Mr. Mochaccino, come on. What are you talking about? Sausage on a pizza? That's too much, little Dominique. Where are you going to get all the resources to fund that kind of pizza? I'm not even done yet. Oh. It's going to have bell pepper. What's oh, 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 oh. a bell pepper? It could have peppuccini if I'm feeling so inclined. So many pepper-based substances. I'm gonna add red pepper flakes post oven. Get the f out of here! Forget about it, <clears throat> babe. Babe, you know, um, remember when little Dominico came by the window earlier? Yeah, and he was talking about all that stuff he was gonna put on his pizza. You really got me thinking, you know? I mean, this is the 30s, you know? It's like, we need to get up and move here. I think little Dominico and the whole Dominico family, they got they got real aspirations over there. And you and me, no, no two nickels to rub together. Yeah, but Donnie, you got your job at the finger smushing factory. And who knows, if you get your finger smushed every day for the next 20 years, we can move upstate. This finger is our ticket to upstate, baby. I've always believed that. Donald, Donald, will you come into my office, please? 
Yeah. Donald, we don't think we haven't noticed the hard work you've been putting in here at the Finger Smashing Factory, huh? A lot thinner than it was last week. Uh, it, could pass, it could pass under my door so easily I'm nearly afraid. <laughs> Donald, there's a couple of changes coming in the structure of the company very soon, and I'd like to pre-offer you a position in upper management. Oh, well, you know, my girl, Carla Chinas, you know, she's got a little a little baby Chino at home and uh, moving up in the world, you know, to be honest with you, I was just having a conversation with her last night about maybe jumping ship from the finger smushing business. But if you're going to offer me a raise, then I'm on board. Donald, this position would require you to jump ship from your family. Oh, okay. We have a strict no children policy. Hey, Donnie, I need you to take baby Chino for a minute, okay? I'm going to hand him over to you. Here. My finger hurts. I know, but babe, you got to hold him. Oh, okay. Oh, no, you're dropping him. You're ah! dropping him. <laughs> All right. Hey, just hang on. I got a lot on my mind and a lot of smush in my finger, baby. Listen, that's enough. I've had enough, okay? Listen, Donnie, it's either me and baby Chino, and we move upstate, and we do the pizza game, and we follow the crazy man who talked about all those vegetables, or it's over, and I'm going back to my mama Gugino's house. You dare, dare go back to your mama Gugino's house. You know that when we left there, we eloped. They say, yelled they after you. You never come back here. You don't care to show your face around there again. Don't you ever come back here. Mama Cuccino will never forget what you done. And if you ever try to come back, oh, you don't even want to see the day. You don't even want to feel the wrath. Mama Cuccino, Mama Cuccino, listen to me. It is a bet. Okay, she's been gone. She called it Cino's been gone for three days. You're talking to, to the air. Nobody is here, Mama Cuccino. <laughs> well, I need, I need everyone to know the message. Because if she ever come back, I'm not, I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth. No, I won't. I know, Mama Gugino. You're a very good mama. You take care of us, all 16 of us. I do. We're going to have to tell Mama Gugino, is she too old? She a young any people are not there anymore? We're going to have to take her the reins away to the buggy. She can't no drive the buggy no more. Listen, Raffaello. <laughs> I'm gonna go take the buggy out, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on my favorite, Mama. my all-time favorite thing, my Sunday buggy drive. The only Mama, thing wait. I get for. Mama, wait, please, basta, basta, please. Uh, Raffaello, he has something he would like to say to you. I will Mama. tell me when I get back from my favorite thing in the world, the buggy ride. Mama Cuccino, you know what I'm holding? Is it spaghetti? No. It's not a spaghetti, it's the reins to your buggy. See, she doesn't even know what the reins to the buggy look like no more. Why, I, why, why you have the reins to my buggy for my favorite Sunday drive, the only thing I live for? Mama Cuccino, we're gonna have to take the reins of your buggy away. You were too old to drive the buggy, you're gonna run into a storefront, you're gonna break a people's face. It's, it's okay, Mama Cuccino, listen, you can do something else that's super fun, okay? You can sit on the stoop. Sit on the stoop, Mama Cuccino. Never, no. never did I think I'd see the day my own family come to betray me. Mama Cuccino. Well, well, well. Mama Cuccino sitting on in the stoop. There's nothing I like about the stoop. You just sit there, you knit, you knit your socks. You just keep on knitting socks all day long. I used to have the reins. You thought you was better than Estelle. You're no better than Estelle. You, Estelle had her reins taken away. Estelle yelling at people who not there. Mama Cuccino, también. I always been better than you, Estelle. You remember in 1904? Oh, don't go bring it up in 1904! You remember... The gnocchi contest. Who make it the best gnocchi? Mm. Who make it? It's Mama Cucina. Mama Cucina. Mom, Mama Cucina, please. 
I know. I promise I never come back here. You you tell me that I can't come back, but we need money because we we gotta start a pizza business with little Dominico. Oh, so so I tell you, you never come back, and then and then when you do come back, you need money. To like a, a lot. <laughs> Mama Cucino may may be rich from winning the gnocchi contest in the nineteen o three, but but I still. I remember when you were low. I remember. Welcome to the Bronx, New York Mewkey Contest of 1903-04. An eight-month contest where Mewkey is made and remade over a series of months. And today is the final day of competition where we have... Estelle Gravitino and Mama Cacino. Manioki is no jokey. Uh, Manioki is a, a like a pillow. Good luck with that. Baby, baby, when you go out there to the contest, you're going to need to catch a catchy phrase. Okay? You know Mama Cacino is going to come up with a gnocchi is a no joke. You know she's going to. telling everybody on the street. On the block said Manoki is a no jockey, and I think to myself, that's the best thing to rhyme with jockey. I know, I can't think. I've been trying to think all the week of something that rhyme with jockey. Okay, but what about this? Okay, so gnocchi, it means pillow. It means mm. pillow. pillow. Mm. So what if I just remind people of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you go with the that. Gnocchi is a pillow. It doesn't even, it makes no sense. It contextually doesn't fit. At all. I curse you, Mama Cucino. And I swear one day when we are very old on the same stoop, you will be down in the dirt with me, not driving because of your eyesight. Mama Cucino, okay. never lose the reins. I'll be on the buggy forever. No, never the stoop. Down in the dirt on the stoop with a me, Estelle, and I will live and I will live out before you, and you will die, and I will spit on your grave, and I will marry your children to to other peasants, and I will ruin your family. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I was I was going through the family history, <laughs> and I came across some pretty crazy stuff. Um, what is it, Reggie? Well, it turns out, um, great grandma Cacino, mm -hmm. you, they call her grandmama Cacino, you know that. Uh, yeah, you're Italian, you're Italian side. <laughs> I love those colorful stories. I, I know, them. I know, I know, you know, I, people, people are like, you're not Italian. I'm like, I am Italian. I am yeah. Italian. I'm a deep sometimes Italian. they're blonde. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you're not Italian. I, I am Italian though. I am Italian. Oh. Though. Okay. Uh, name five cities in Italy. You know, it's not really about naming cities. Um, it's like that doesn't that doesn't make a person's heritage. Okay, Milan, Venice, Rome, uh, Cacino, the city. <laughs> That's where my my family's from. And yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Shit. Go on back to the Caucasus Mountains. Honey, you can't get into those pissing contests when you're at the uh, research library. You guys, you science guys go crazy on each other. No. Well, Carl, he's just so like, you know, focused on, you know, what is your heritage and, and, and how can you prove it? And I'm like, you know, I'm a researcher, Carl. Hey, uh, I was wondering if you could point me in the direction of uh, particle atomic uh, physics books. Yeah. Oh, sure. It's actually just going to be to the right and then... Three aisles down and to your left. Hold on a second. What is your heritage? Oh, I am actually South African. <laughs> Name three cities. Johannesburg, Fredericksburg, and Afrikaans. <laughs> Name two more to make it five. Cellini? Faker! You're a faker! <laughs> I'm going to go study what you originally told me about, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> Shh. Sorry. Hey, Shusher, what is your heritage? Um. No, go ahead. Tell me. Whisper it if you have to. No, you're just. just, just shh, shh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm actually. I'm actually uh, from New Zealand. Okay. Say, say three cities. 
There are there are three cities in New Zealand. Is that true? It's just Auckland. The whole thing. And then New Zealand City. That's the whole thing. Yeah, that's the only two. You for somebody who cares about heritage a lot, you need to study up on New Zealand, bud. I know a lot about the Aboriginals. Welcome to New Zealand. Um, I know you guys are here to learn about the Aboriginals. Um, and so we're going to dive right in. Eh? Um, first of all, um, can you two, um, can you two not, can you not take pictures of me? Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. We're from Kentucky and y'all are just so funny. You sound like cartoons. Okay, that's, um, that's a bit of an insult. Um, no, so no, 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 like her. Like the Kentucky Fried Chicken, or honey, what's the other one that you love? That short uh, one. Uh, Doctor Doctor Boonhauer's uh, Barbecue Sauce. Yes, and he's got that song, you know, and it goes barbecue, barbecue, barbecue in the morning and in the evening. It's barbecue, 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 barbecue in the so morning. Cute. It's so cute. Yeah, uh, it's something. It's something you'd probably like a lot. Hey Cindy, um, could you give me no more Americans on my uh, on my tours? Like, no, I've had enough. Oh, okay. come on, my my babe, listen, I can't. No, 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 no. Don't no. say no to me. Don't say no. No, I'm not going to do you any favors just because we've been going out for six months. We've been going out for six. Where's my ring? Where's my, my ring? Ah. Hey, mom, mom. Yes, what is it, Charlie? Is your boyfriend being abusive, both, both no, verbally? I'm not, for the last time, Ace, I'm not an abusive boyfriend, okay? You should need to watch what? Stop watching all those TV shows about all those no, abusive boyfriends. Don't say that, okay? He loves NCIS. I'm, I'm not going to stop okay, him. Okay, but it's not me, is it? No. I love NCIS, and I, learn, I learned a lot about abuse from it. And he's also been watching a lot of British television, and you can tell by the way he sounds. That's right. I've been practicing in case I ever get to go to England, which is my dream. And that's right, Charlie. And you know what? Maybe if the tourism business makes enough money and everyone chips in and people aren't dicks about doing their part, yeah. maybe we can schedule a trip to England. I'd love to do that. Yeah, and maybe one day I could work at the Scotland Yard. Oh, sure, babe. Sure. I'd be the best detective. You know what? When I put a ring on your mom's finger and I become the man of this house around here, which will be in about six weeks' time. Oh, oh, TikTok. Let's see. Don't say oh to me. Don't oh me. Here he is, set an alarm for six weeks' time. You do set an alarm. Set an alarm. Set because an when alarm. I become yeah. man of this household, you're going to go back to speaking with the New Zealand accent and you're never going to speak with a British accent, Scottish, Irish or British or any of the Isles in my friggin' house. You can, you can tell me how to be. <laughs> you oh can. God. You'll never tell I, me how to be, Fred. This Dad. is what I get for dating a guy in his 20s. I here to buy a ring for my lady. Okay, we have lots of rings, mate. She's in her 40s. Oh, uh, but as you can see, uh, I'm in my 20s. I've got a couple used rings if you'd be more interested in that, mate. I mean, as long as they don't look used, um, uh, I could save a bit of kip on it. Well, we only accept Aussie dollars. We don't accept kip here. Um, it says blind jewelers outside. Is that because you're blind? What did you call me? <laughs> oh my God, here's the thing, Deb. I think I've got to break up with him. I think I've got to dump him. I mean, you know, he's in. And no, no, come back in here, Jeffrey. Sandy, Jeffrey, Sandy, Jeffrey. You know, you're part of this too. Just because you're Deb's husband doesn't mean you can't listen. I'd love to get your two cents. Love to have a I, man's opinion. I'd love him to have two cents in his fucking head once in a fucking while. Tell me about it. Well, I was, just, I was just on my way to get some fosters, to get some fosters from the market, and I thought maybe you, maybe you two lovely ladies would like a can. I mean, you know what I'd love is a yellowtail, Cindy Jeffrey. If you could get me a Chardonnay. No problem. I'll just leave you two be then. All right. Now, see, that's nice. That's nice. He's finally, you know what? I think those husband classes are really paying off. Were they expensive? 
Well, I've got a group on on it. Okay, well, how much are we talking? Because if I'm going to stay with this guy, I've got to get him shaped up because I'm so terrified he's going to go to like a pawn shop and buy some shit ring. And then I'm going to have to say like, oh, you're so hot, but you're so poor. So f- five more weeks then. And he's going to be, he's, he's, on, the, he's on the six week clock in a week. Eh? So it's going to be any time now. I recommend it on this pawn. Uh, maybe you find yourself interested in a new guitar or... Or a hunting knife? Listen, I've been around to a lot of the shops in the area, so I've got good ideas. You didn't try to hoodwink me, eh? I've got a good idea of what's available in terms of used wedding rings. So what have you got for a used wedding ring from a guy in his 20s to my girl in her 40s who's got a son who's a bit of a fucking dick? She's it. Oh, now that you say that, look at this. Oh. It's obsidian. Oh, right. This does say, hey, babe, I know we can't have kids. I want to adopt. Your son's a bit of a dick. When's he going to move out? That, that... That, and it's because most rings are metaphors. And, and that's why I got into the pawn business. So I could help people like you pick the right metaphor. Really? So you do all this... All these guitars and imps, that drum kit over there, that didgeridoo, that all these, all these air horns, all this is just for the rings. So even you, the Cuban bongos, even the Cuban bongos. Hey man, hey man, I gotta get some cash for these bongos like right now. What can you hook me up? What have you? What can you do on these bongos? What are they, Cuban? Yeah, they're Cubans. This Cuban bongos. Let me what? here. Let me just let me just try them out for you, really. Like just just listen to this. Doesn't sound like anything. Welcome, welcome to the untethered soul. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Persimone, and I'm going to be guiding you through this erotic oral. Reiki session. Uh, you can hear my man Charles. He's playing the Cuban bongos. So everybody, give him, give him some love, some fingers. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Oh, I love Charles. I actually, if you can believe this, I met Charles when I was on walkabout in Australia, <laughs> <laughs> and I was unconscious for seven days. I blacked out totally. And when I came to, I was sort of writhing on the street. <laughs> Charles, she doesn't seem like she's very conscious. Just, just, hey, just leave her be. She's an angel. She's lying there. And uh, as soon as she wakes up, I want to be the one. I want to make her fall in love with me. I've never seen somebody so beautiful all my life. Oh, oh my, Jeez. oh my God. Get back, get back, Jeff. Get back, Jeff. Where, where am, where even am I? Hello, look at me. Hello, I'm here oh. for you. I'm here as you come to. Hello. Oh my God, you're so tall. I'm so, yeah, that's right. And you're, wow. very, yeah, it's because I'm over you because you're on the ground. You oh. fell out. You fell off of that rail car there and you bumped your little cute little noggin. Oh my god, that's so crazy. The last thing I remember, I had roller skates. <laughs> you there! Don't hang over the edge of the rail car! Don't hang over the edge of the rail! You're gonna fall no, off the okay. bike! I'm skating! <laughs> there be sk- There's no skating I'm on my skating. rail car! Fine. I'm really good at it! Look! It's <laughs> a sharp turn! Today in New Zealand city, a terrible accident happened when an American girl had held on to the side of a rail car while wearing roller skates. This is actually unfortunately becoming a normal thing that happens here as Americans are coming and overwhelming our entire society, going on our tours, shouting down the tour guides and rolling on roller skates down the middle of our streets. If you're American, and anyway, that's how I got a lawsuit settlement for $40 million from the Australian government. <laughs> and that's when I decided to just put it back energetically. 
put it back energetically. So everybody, let's take a deep breath in. <sighs> really tilt back your pelvic floor. Really tilt it. Uh -huh. Okay, you feeling that? Oh. Good. Good. Yes, I. I see you, Dakota. Good. Oh. Hey there, Dakota. Let's. So uh, I'll see you here on your chart. It's your first time at the chiropractor. Gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be doing a little work on your pelvis today, is that right? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll watch. Um, are you familiar with Persimmons? Um, Am I familiar? Um, I should, I should thank her for, for no, lots of business. Can you just, no, can you just oh, leave? Hi, ding dong, sorry. It's me, Persimmony. I just heard <sighs> you call me Persimmon, and I wanted to come in and make sure that you got it right. Oh, uh, Persimmony. Hi, 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 I'm big fan. Big fan. Yeah, that's, that's like I was saying. You, you asked me if I'm familiar. We actually share... Uh, uh, the same building uh, down here in the commercial units. And, sorry, by the way, Ralph, are you good for Korean for lunch? Of course I'm good for Korean. Book okay. I'll give beef all day. Okay, all right. Big fan, big fan, persimony, big fan. No, no, no. We don't We don't fan out here at the chiropractor's office. We get adjusted and we move on. I feel I feel embarrassed that I got a name wrong. I mean, I'm such a big fan. I can't believe I said it wrong. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, in 1985, Madonna came out here, and, uh, and uh, I that called her. Me, that does make me feel bigger. Well, okay, I'm glad that that's all it took. No, babe, no, I went to this chiropractor, no, and he told me a story, all right? He didn't touch me the whole time. He told me a story about what Madonna and Huh? I said, was this like accidentally a sex thing or something? It was accidentally a sex thing. What? what? Why does everything have to... I didn't catch you. I'm saying, was it like a scam? What happened? I'm saying he fixed me with his words. Oh, my God. This is just like when I tried to join Lula Row. okay? No, that's a scam. Did you give him your money? Yeah, of course. I gave him 500... Didn't catch you. No, but, no, but he, fixed me. He, fixed my whole, he fixed my whole pelvis by telling me a story no. about Madonna in 1985. No, Dakota, that is absolutely a scam, babe. How much did you pay I, him? Shit, again? Fuck. This is, like, this is exactly I'm... like when you were going to sell ice. Oh, no. Oh, wait. <laughs> sure I'd be interested in some ice. So, all you have to do is get three other people, bring them back here by six o'clock. They have to have ice cubes that are full, have ice in them, Wait. and then we put, yeah? I have a good idea. This could triple your business instantly. You pay me $500 and I'll take the ice and then do what you're doing right now. Sounds fair? That actually sounds really good. I mean, shit. I'm my girls always seem really gullible, but this does sound like a good deal. You give me $500 and I'll make sure that this ice is frozen. I don't know how this is going to make me money, but you seem trustworthy. Well, I'm a businessman. Babe, <sighs> there's a great, that was a great episode of uh, the untethered soul today. Uh, do you think next time I could bring the bongos on screen? Charles, I mean, this is this is what's called communing. We're communing because the uh -huh. energy that I was sending to you okay. is giving back to me, and it's reciprocal and it's electric, and that's exactly what I want. I want the bongos. I want to feel every single beat. You know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll stay off screen then. Uh, and we'll no. Play. Yeah. For sure, none of the people can see you because of oh, your gosh. big scar. Okay. Big scar on your face. It's gonna okay. be. You know, unfortunately, it's just off-putting to look at your face, but your music, oh, my God, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, when we met, babe, um, you were oh, like, <laughs> I, I like, I like your scar. As soon as you woke up on the on the street, uh, I was like, you were like, I oh, like your scar. Charles, 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 that was five years ago. Charles. Uh, right. Charles, I was only a girl of 47 then, you know, I've... I've grown up. Right. Grown up. Right. So, Devin, have you made your decision on the management position to relinquish your family and 
make it big time here at the Finger Smashing Factory? Uh, I think I'm going to go for it. <laughs> um, but uh, my wife and a little baby, um, they gone. Are, they're, they're, they're gone. No, right, but I have a feeling uh, they're not going to be gone again. That maybe they are going to come around and they are going to cause a problem so for you and maybe your family. See, my wife, she's not like a pushover. Uh, she's more of a stronger, uh, opinionated woman. Well, that's not going to work for me, Devin. <laughs> it's not. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Yeah, it's me. Under the window. It's me, the lady who says that you can miss to leave for a family to get his finger smushed for the rest of his life. Yeah, come out here. Come out here. That's an egg. Hey. 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 <laughs> My wit, my wit, do not throw eggs at my window! And guess what? Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave this baby on your stoop. I'm gonna leave this baby on your stoop, and I'm gonna leave a note that said, This is Mr. Gallensburg who works out of the factory, and he's the one that left his baby here! If you leave that baby, I have the right to sell it! <laughs> stop. Good luck! He seems very stupid! Stop throwing eggs at my house! Given all of this, little Dominico looked around his community and thought, I'm out of here. This is too crazy. There's too many people taking reins away from grandmothers. There's too many people throwing eggs at their husband's supervisors or had them thrown out of their lives on purpose. I need to create a supreme pizza, and I'm heading upstate to do it. Little Dominico took his cigarette, he put it in his lips, he blew it back out, and he bought himself a train ticket to Albany. <laughs> All aboard for Albany! Yeah, so I decided I would take the train. And, uh, you know, maybe people in Albany will understand the concept of a supreme pizza, huh? I mean, that just, that just sounds crazy to me, that whole idea. I don't know how, you know, where are you going to get the funding for that? Well, I mean, I'm I'm open to investors. I mean, you're a conductor, right? You got plenty of money. You, you. I couldn't help but overhear you. See, my uh, name is Lilibet Octavia, and I'm an eccentric millionaire. Everyone in my whole family died in a mysterious fire. <laughs> anyway, I love pizza. I love it all. Love it, love it, cheese, cheese, cheese. Anyway, here's a check for forty thousand dollars. Wow. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lilibet, will you? Lilibet! Yes? What? Last time you came in here, you seemed to have, have built quite a large fire in the fireplace. That seems unnecessarily large. Oh, Gerald, you're being a tiddlywink, a tiddlywink and a skeletal. And I'm just having fun with my little sticks. My little sticks, I make little stacks of sticks and I have fun with them. Okay, well, I'm going to count my doll hairs. Well, you know my legs don't work. So I can't get out of bed and stuff the fire. Oh, no. I'll bring in your soup shortly. It'll be very hot. Good night. Okay, as long as it's soup. And it'll be under a little... I'll bring a little fire to keep it really warm. Oh, one, two, three... Are you literally eight. counting hairs? Yes, you know that I like to count the hairs on Olivia's head. She's a very precious china doll. I'm tired of this. Tonight, we examined the life of Miss Devereaux. Changed her name many times throughout her life, but her life and her memoir was a diddlywink and a skiddly-doo. And this documentary, from front to back, will show you what the woman was all about. Good morning, good morning. Oh, it's you, Lilibet. Good morning to you, honey. Well, how do you do? And a hey, 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 skiddly wink and a twiddly do. Someday I'm going to be very rich if it means I have to kill my whole family. Who knows? Ah, <laughs> uh, Lily, come down here. It's your father. I've got some French toast for you. What is with the knife in your hand, darling? Oh, this old thing? I don't know. I just thought I'd trick. <laughs> oh, silly. Silly Lily. <clears throat> All right, uh, we got a, a dead family here. Um, we, one of the daughters is missing. Um, uh, there's some tracks here. 
uh, from uh, in blood that lead out the back door. Uh, Chris, can you uh, can you follow? See where those tracks head to. Uh, uh, actually, where hit you, Chief? I had followed them, and it appears that they went left on Third Street. And then, and then you came back here. You didn't follow them any further, Chris. Well, I just needed to know the first place that they they went, so that I could report back. I would. I don't want to be thought of as a wall again. Well, I like that you were ahead of the game, but now you're behind it. Hey, everybody! Uh, happy Saturday night. <laughs> I'm real happy to see you all here at the Bluebird Cafe. Um, my name is Tanya Montgomery, and uh, I'm going to play a little song for you. Something I wrote about a woman who uh, gives me a great deal of inspiration. Maybe some of y'all heard of her. She was an eccentric billionaireess, and her name was Little Bit. And uh, first thing she ever did was go left on Third Street. Right. Her name was Lily Bat, and I bet you'd know that if you saw her face, it was full of sorrow. She wasn't crazy, but she was a little bit crazy. I love you. I love y'all. And she went left on Third Street and right into my heart. No, I, I love you. I love you. Left on Third Street has become quickly one of the radio's biggest hits. So guess what? We're playing again, folks. Here on 97.1 K-Pop. Left on Third Street. Coming at you for the fourth time in a row. Hey, Kev. Can you come on in here? Hey. Great show today, man. Your voice is sound really good on the radio. Thanks. It's actually, I think, I think I get a little help from the microphone. I think you do too. You know, um, we were just, uh, we were just thinking that maybe we want to extend your shift. That maybe you know you got the dulcet tones on the microphone to do uh, maybe a six-hour shift rather than just your regular four-hour shift. People have been calling in saying, "Man, I love that guy's voice." Yeah, sure, I love everybody, but let's bring it back. We're going crazy right now because you guys are so good out there. Everybody's like, hey, we gotta get more of that. Oh, Laura always has such good energy. She does. And so, little Dominico arrived right there in Albany, stepped off the train, and he had his benefactor right behind him, the most billionaire woman in all of upstate New York. She wrote that check for 40000 and she intended to see him cash it. She wanted to see him buy a building and start his own little pizza factory. So they walked around town, pointing planes out. Dominico smoked constantly. He chewed chewing tobacco as well as bubble gum at the same time. And the lady just jogged alongside of him. They started to look sideways at each other, and they started to really feel a little bit of a connection. And although they were separated by 60 years of age, they thought, hey, why don't we get a hotel room? No, we do not rent hotels by the hour. Please? <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Because you made me laugh and you're a goofy, goofy woman. Oh, you to do it. old gal, aren't I? Here's a hundred Oh, oh, well, I mean, that's enough for three rooms for three nights, but uh, you're going to have we'll it. Take all three. We'll, we'll take all three. And they did take all three. Listen, little Dominico, there's something you should know before we make love. <laughs> what is it? I have a mark on my body. It's a, it's a mole, doctors say, but it's in the shape of a... Well, the continent of Africa, and uh, some men have found it off putting. Af Africa? Name three cities. <laughs> cities anywhere? All right. Boston, then you've got San Francisco. No! I need you to name of three African cities so I know that you don't have them all just to make people think that you're African. Oh, well, that makes all kinds of sense. Cities in Africa. Let's see. There's Niger, there's Tangier, and there's 
Fredericksburg. Esteli, curse you. Curse you, Mama Dominico. May your grandson go on a venture to Albany, New York, and get involved with a crazy billionaire woman who has a tattoo, a mark, a, a birthmark of the continent of Africa on her body, and she will waste his life by talking to him about the banal things. She will waste his time. I curse you. I curse you, Mama Dominico. <laughs> You don't curse a Mama Dominico, you gnocchi, no nothing, empty headed idiot. Mama Dominico rejects your curse, but I feel like it's already sunk in. Ah, it's already sunk in. Esteli cursey always come a true, Mama Dominico. Aye. So, yeah, I curse you, Mama Daninka. Your grandson will be funded, and then he will be unfunded! Unfunded, Italiano! No! <clears throat> yeah, this is a $40,000 check. Well, well, this should be enough for you to rent this place and turn it into a pizza house or whatever you want to do with it for a, a good three months. I'm going to make a supreme pizza. It's going to have a sausage. It's going to have a bell pepper. I might even put a spicy pepper on there. You got a big dreams. Uh, I just need to take this to the bank to see if it's, uh, you know, <laughs> good. Why did you chew on my check? I did it. I did it. You chewed on my check. Hello, Mr. Banker. Hi, I'm I'm in charge of the bank here. Can you please verify that this $40,000 check is good? Well, can I hold it? Yeah, it has a little bite mark in the corner. I'm sorry. I I bit it thinking it was metal, but it's a piece of paper. I don't know. I Everybody freeze! Uh-oh. That's weekly, right. Weekly hands, robbery. Hands up. This is a robbery, and I'm going to take every little money that you got in here. That's right. I'm defunding all of you people here in Albany. The Italians, the Irish, the French, if they're still lurking around the corners. Give me that check right now. Oh, that's Mama Bo Ridley and the defund gang of North New York State. Mama Bo. Well, You've heard of us. You better give me that check to chew on right now. Mama Bo Ridley, can I go on the bank heist today in Albany? I'm ready. I'm ready to defund people, Mama Bo Ridley. You're not ready. And you know how I know? Because you were swinging your head all around when you were giving uh, that dumb speech. And in that time, somebody got a four six. Look at you're choking on your own hair, you big idiot. Mama, Mama. Oh. Ah, not another cigarette. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy Bo Ridley? Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like you made Mama mad again. Daddy, come. Can you stop living in the shed in back of the Bo Ridley estate and come back in the house? Mama's gone crazy. Look she at my face, boy. Man in my house, I'll shoot you both right in the dick. <laughs> Look at my face, boy. I can't take another cigarette burn. I can't. I commend you for trying, but I can't do it. Mama Bo Ridley took a lover. What? Fine. They're in there right now. Don't no. you hear the squeaking? Don't you hear the squeaking, Daddy Bo Ridley? Hand me my pitchfork. Oh, Mama Bo Ridley. Oh, Mama Bo Ridley. Oh, Mama Bo Ridley. Oh, Mama Bo Ridley. Oh, Daddy Bo Ridley, what? You don't interrupt Stab. them. Stab! <laughs> I got stabbed with a pitchfork! Stab! Oh, 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 oh. I may look like a monster, but I kill like a monster. Mama Bo Ridley, I thought you got stabbed with a pitchfork and died. All it did was make me stronger. He stabbed me right in the kidney that had cancer. So when the doctors took it out, I got healthier than ever. Oh, my God. It's true. The legends they talk about is true. You are indestructible. Give me that check right now and nobody gets hurt. I got to be. 40000 That'll do. <laughs> Mama Bo Ridley took that $40,000 check and she hopped the first stagecoach to Nebraska. And on Welcome the to my stagecoach. <laughs> All right.
I'm going to Nebraska. I know. Well, how would you know? Because I hopped it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, I could have been headed anywhere. Well, I know that there, we're going east. I mean, west. Ow! That's what I'm saying. You're fine. I mean, I'm glad it worked out. You're awfully casual. Is this what all the people in Nebraska are like? No, this is just how stagecoach drivers are, though. I mean, come on. I, uh, it's a life on the road. We opened a bank, you guys. You want to stop in? We got free cookies. Free that cookies? That guy seemed pretty friendly and casual, too. And he wasn't driving a buggy or a stagecoach, whatever these things are called. I, well, I mean, I guess I guess it's how we're raised here in Nebraska. I mean, what what can we say? It's a, it's the Cornhusker State. Hey, stagecoach. <laughs> hey. I gotta, hey, I gotta Paul. Go to, I got to go back to New York. No, no, come back. Come hop on. Paul. Paul, how's the family? <laughs> okay, Paul, we'll see you later. Mama Bo Ridley learned that Nebraska is so boring. So she hopped the first train right back to New York, and there she was, robbing banks and running game. Mama Bo Ridley couldn't get enough, biting checks and fighting guys named Jeff. Mama Bo Ridley got herself a Gatlin gun, and she started taking people out from the side of a stagecoach as she ran her. Mama Bo Ridley was worse than Bonnie and Clyde. She was the worst murderer in the world. I was hit last week. On a stage coach by a Gatling gun. <laughs> and I would like to press formal charges against the Wells Fargo Federation of Stagecoach Operators, Supreme Justice. I'm John Wells Fargo, and I have to tell you something. Our stagecoaches are 100% trustworthy and reliable. Now, if you were hit with a Gatling gun, how can you be sure that it was a Wells Fargo stagecoach? I was on it. Was this a Mama Bo Ridley accident? No accident, sir. John Wells Fargo, you better get in here. Your supper's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, John Wells Fargo, here you are, my darling man. Now tell me how you squashed those poor people so we can keep eating in our lily gilded palace. <laughs> well, uh, Jezebel Wells Fargo, I, I have a, we're having Tell a bit John of a- John Wells Fargo? Tell me, John Wells Fargo. We're having a bit of a problem with the Wells, with the, with the stage coaches. No, John Wells Fargo. But you're it's, a man about town. You're the strongest man there is, the richest man there ever was. What could possibly be wrong? Well, if I could ride every damn stagecoach around this town, I would, but I'm only one man. I can only be on one stagecoach at a time. But what if you were more than one man? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Wells Fargo? I'm here to regild some of the lilies. Oh, wonderful. Come on in, Pietro. Now tell me, are you Italian? I am Italian. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, we have a lot of ethnic people who work here at the Wells Fargo home. Well, I hope I feel very comfortable here. I'm sure you will. Please don't ever speak to me again and come in the back next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. When I was, and may you have a grandson, a name a, a Pietro, and he will be a lily gilder. I curse you! How are you going to ruin my entire lineage? Why are you going to ruin my whole family? And I may you have a greater granddaughter, and she'll be a born a beautiful, but when she'll hit a puberty, she become ugly, ugly. I just want my reins back. Uh, time to go to prom, Jesse. <laughs> I got your request. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be right there. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Tag. One second. I didn't know you were, I didn't know you could hear me as re I was rehearsing my speech for when you opened the door. Yeah, I'm just, I'm coming. I just, I got to warn you. Um, I hit puberty <laughs> since I saw you on at school on Friday. Um, and things are just kind of different. That's okay. I'm okay. I have a good attitude towards menstruation. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Um, My face is permanently like this now. I, I literally can't make any other expressions. So um, it's a family curse. It's not a big uh, deal. Um, yeah, here's a corsage. Um, oh, it's, it's really pretty. Um, do I pin it on your wrist? 
<laughs> yeah, just over the hump. <laughs> hey, you two. Well, welcome to prom. Come on in. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, Jesus. Oh. We're excited oh. too. We're excited too. No, it's not. Oh my God. Stop. Who? <laughs> Who let you in? <laughs> Who let you in? Just the guy at the door. So my date actually left. Oh, <laughs> so. oh my God. Okay, oh. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> 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 Riverdale Middle School has officially had three deaths due to hideousness. That story and more at seven. It's seven. Riverdale Middle School has officially had three deaths due to hideousness. One student, Brett Sanchez, died when letting in a lovely Italian young woman who had been hideous due to a curse. Uh, and, you know, Brett was, he was my little brother, and I just want to say about Brett is that, like, he, when he looked at people, like, he really looked at them, you know, like, he, he saw them, and I think, like, in this case, that's what, like, led to his death, because people who are that ugly shouldn't be able to walk around and go to prom. Yeah, that's, and thank you for saying that. Uh, this is Stephen Morehouse, obviously, the brother of the deceased, and I think the message- <laughs> Yeah, and I think the message that we're all trying to convey here is if you're ugly, stay inside or just kill yourself. Guys, where are you guys?